They come here every day to spend hours prying chunks of rock out of the mountainside. It is dangerous and back-breaking work. The rock is sold to others who use it to build houses, walls or roads. These labourers earn very little. We only earn 500 lempira a week. That's around 20 euros. The unemployment rate in Honduras is high, around 40%. That's why others soon arrive, eager to earn some extra money. Not far away is La Esperanza, a town in the country's mountainous Intibuca region and home to a few thousand people. The town is supplied with electricity, although the system does break down from time to time. In Honduras, there is one major energy company. Its two power stations run on oil and diesel, which pollute the air. In the countryside, most villages are without electricity. Many have been waiting for years to be connected to the grid. Canadian businessman Ron Turner wants to change that using environmentally friendly hydroelectric power. He set out to complete a project abandoned decades ago. Okay, this is the original reservoir that was uh, part of the original uh, hydro project that was built just after uh, the Second World War by some German immigrants in the late 1940s. The bottom portion you can see is left as it was, the, the pipe coming through in the original rock. And that was carved by rock masons and fit together to be watertight. And then on top of it, we built, uh, we repaired it with just concrete. You can see the concrete there. The rainy season has just come to an end. It didn't actually rain much this year, which is unusual for this region. That's a problem for Turner. Water supplies are so low that the turbines can only be powered for a few hours a day. The electricity is fed into a grid. The hydro power station displaces 30,000 tonnes of greenhouse gases a year. And that means Turner has 30,000 carbon credits to sell. An important source of income. This hydro project generates electricity with the water flowing through it. That displaces energy that is made in this country with bunker and with diesel fuel. And that's how we gain the carbon credits. The hydroelectric power company has around 75 employees and there's always plenty to do. They all have proper work contracts, an exception here. Here, another small reservoir is being constructed, not to provide electricity, but to cool the machinery and generators in the power plants. We pay a visit to the headquarters. Soccer is extremely popular in Honduras, and the employees use nearly every lunch break to play. Keep the pipe in the same place with Luis Chavez is an engineer. He designed the power plants and he oversaw their construction. See, maybe we can. Where is the door coming in? Door gonna be somewhere here, right. beside this. The project is making a large contribution to clean energy and is supporting the village. It provides both work and electricity to neighboring villages as well. It improves overall quality of life. Chavez and his wife both work for the project. They want to show us just what changes have been made here. We're heading to the nearby village of San Fernando, which recently received electricity for the first time, thanks to their efforts. The first thing people buy are light bulbs to illuminate their homes. Then come radios, so they can listen to the local news and music. 
They're all the things families need. Over time, they buy refrigerators, electric heaters, TVs, and satellite dishes. The couple have close contacts to the community, and today they're visiting an acquaintance. Thanks to electricity, she can now offer her guests chilled water from the refrigerator. And she uses light bulbs instead of candles. It's an incredible improvement. Now we can store things in the refrigerator, like the juice we make and sell to earn money. We can also keep our food fresh and don't have to use it up straight away. On its way down into the valley, the river passes through three dams and is driven through turbines each time. This plant produces 13 megawatts of electricity, which provides power to 75,000 homes. Compared to others, this power plant may be modest. The benefit to the region, however, is huge. But we're considered too small to be economically viable for somebody like the World Bank and that. So they pay us very little attention. We never get paid for the carbon credits. It takes years to get paid from them. The money never helps us. So we have to do all those things on our own. But sooner or later, the money does arrive. Turner has 25,000 trees planted per year. Pine trees, poplars, oaks. It's an additional contribution to the environment but it doesn't generate any income. Turner hopes one day it will enable him to sell more certificates, but that would involve a lot of red tape. He says if he could find wealthy investors, he would buy more land and set up more power stations. After all, the river is long. <laughs>